Hi folks, Dan Hegstead here. The book and the podcast and the vlog are Next Steps, Tools for Transforming from Coping to Thriving. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Appreciate that. We are into episode four, I think. After I finished episode three, my wife said, well, what are you talking about down there? And so I explained it. And she said, well, that sounds pretty heavy. And I said, well, yeah, it is. But you know, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to teach. I'm here to be honest. I'm here to help. And I would rather have 100 subscribers who are getting something out of this rather than a million subscribers who are being entertained. It's not the point. I'm not, I'm not here to make money. Yeah, you should buy my book, and you should book me as a speaker, and I'll cash all those checks and everything. But it's not about building a brand so much as helping you. And it's not going to be terribly – well, it's going to be – it's challenging. I say many times, this is simple, but it's not easy. I understand where you're at, and I understand the challenges ahead of you. I'm here to help. So today I want to talk about honesty. And there are different levels of that and different flavors of it. And I know you're an honest person. If you're given the wrong change, you're going to correct that. If you find something that's lost, you'll try and return it. You are, you're that kind of honest, I know. And it's a, that's, a, that's good. That's a nice thing to do. I know you don't steal things, even when it could be easy to do so. Yeah, some people would. You wouldn't. But how honest are you on your taxes? How meticulous are you? Yeah, I try and be pretty close, but, you know, I'm not a real good record keeper. I'm not into all those details, so my taxes are probably pretty close, but not totally accurate. Um, how about when there's a huge corporation involved? You know, that's, uh, it's easier to do when it's, rather than when it's a mom-and-pop operation or an individual. Think about that. Okay, but that's not where we're going today. We're going beyond that. I'm going to ask you to be honest about your biases. I'm going to ask you to be honest about your prejudices. Well, that's, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no real rules about that. You're going to have to go deep into your soul and think about that. And it will change over time. It's okay. You don't have to do this perfectly at the beginning. You can't. So don't even, well, give it a shot. Do the best you can. But be honest about that. This is critical in taking the next steps. Be honest about who you are. Because when you're honest about who you are, once you know who you are and you become that person, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. And you are fine. Of course, you've got some quirks you need to work out. Who doesn't? Nobody. You'll get better over time. There's nothing wrong with that. Be honest about your values. And where do they come from? Are they your values or are they your parents' values, your church? Uh, are they your great, great, great grandparents' values? Do you even know where they came from? What are your values? Be honest about that and live those values or maybe question them and say, eh, maybe that isn't what I want. You need to listen to yourself. Are you always saying the truth? Uh, the simple one I listen to is bad drivers. Oh, the drivers in blank, fill in name of town where you live, are the worst ever. Now, I know they're not serious about it, but it's just nonsense. Of course it's not. Or if you hear yourself saying those people, that's a red flag that should go up. Don't say that because it's not true. All people are not alike. What do you believe? Think about your religious views, about your political views. What do you believe? Do you believe what you are told or do you believe what you believe? It is okay to question these things. You may come around to find out you're just fine, but you may want to change and it's okay. You get to do that. It's nobody's business. But think about it now. And this isn't something that happens overnight, but in the book I ask you, I tell you, if you're serious about this, 
If you're really going to do this, if you're really going to take the next steps and become the person you were meant to be, if you are going to move from coping to thriving, you're going to do this, even though it's challenging and it's easier to do nothing than something. But I'm going to ask you several places in the book. I tell you to get a piece of paper and get a pen and write it down. And I don't mean get a computer and open Word. I mean get a piece of paper, get a piece of paper, and you get yourself a pen and you put ink on paper. There is something magic about taking an idea, running it through your gray matter, out your arm, through your pen, ink on paper. And it happens over and over again. Uh, make a list of goals or whatever it is. If you write it on paper, it's far more likely to become true. And if you really go through, you know, who are you? What do I believe? That sort of thing. Putting it on paper makes it so real. Then you can deal with it. If you want to change, you can. But if you don't, you don't have to. But you can't make a change if you don't know what is uh, what reality is. It has to be ink on paper, as far as I can tell. Um, there's something just magical. And then you can shred it if you want. You can burn it. It's not for anybody to see but you. But just running it through your brain and out your arm onto paper, it, it just uh, makes it explode into reality. So it's a hard thing to do. But I guarantee you, it's okay. It's okay. I have never, never met anyone who has gone through this work, who has become totally honest about who they are and what they believe. I've never met one of them that said it wasn't worth it. Everyone will say it was hard, it was challenging, it took a long time, it was all blah, 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 all that. Everyone says it was worth it. Are you going to do this or just talk about it? If you're really serious about it, this is what you're going to do. That's the way it works. And that's why these videos and, uh, and podcasts are not entertaining. They're about telling you the truth. So what do you believe? Uh, in Part uh, six of my book is my theology. <laughs> I wrote it because I... I've always been involved with the, the big questions of life, even when I was a teenager. And my church wasn't ready for that at all. And um, I wish when I was a teenager, I had been able to read somebody's theology the way I wrote it, because it's I don't know that it's the truth. It's what works for me. But uh, it's an idea. Here's, you know, I can't believe what somebody tells me to believe. I just won't do it. That's not what it is. I have to know who am I and what do I believe. And I'm not selling anything. I don't care a bit whether you subscribe to my theology. But it's an idea. It'll make you think. Okay, so write down your theology. It, if it's scary— if you're, if you're writing it down and you find out, eh, I don't know about that, you need to think about it. It's not going to be easy, but it'll be the right thing to do. Same thing with your politics. What do you believe? You don't have to, you know, our politics in this country was really the framers decided they didn't want a parliamentary system where you could have 20 parties. They wanted this or that. And now we're getting, you know, fragmented and things are, you know, but you're still – basically two parties. I would rather have a parliamentary system, but that's not the way it's set up. So you have to come up with your values and decide, is this what I believe or is this what I'm being told the party wants me to believe? Think for yourself. It's the way to go. Um, I have you make a list of what you're afraid of. What really scares you? And I don't mean ghosts and, you know, I mean, fine, put that on the list. But then why? You know, I'm afraid of disapproval from other people. I'm afraid of looking for another job. I'm afraid. Be honest. There's it's nothing. You put it on paper doesn't mean you have to do something. You still get to choose about it. But just be honest about it. That's, that's some pretty deep honesty. And it's pretty challenging. But if you're going to move to the next steps, if you're going to become who you really are, if you're going to move from coping to thriving, that's what you do. 
Do you see the world as it really is? It's probably impossible to do that totally, but it's possible to do it most of the way. Um, great quote, Anais Nin. She said, we see the world not as it is, but as we are. We see the world not as it is, but as we are. One of the great quotes, and I've collected a whole bunch of them. They're in the... Uh, in the end of this book, part seven, uh, and if you have the Kindle, it's there. If you have the audio book, it's not there, but I've put it on my website too, so you can go on the website, danhegstead.com. You can buy the book, do the Kindle, get the audio book, and part seven and eight are there on the website. Anias Nin, we see the world not as it is, but as we are. So that's our bias, our prejudices, our lens with which we view the world. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's what it is to be human. But knowing that and making a real commitment to reality, as hard as it is, that's what makes you fully human. It makes you who you really are. It's very challenging because sometimes it's pretty tough. Do you know why you act the way you do? <laughs> There's a big question for you. Um, think about that. Why do I do this? What's going on in my head? You know, what's what? Uh, you know, and, and a therapist can help you through this if you need it. Um, we'll talk more about that later. But <laughs> my gosh, if you can have a guide rather than stumble through the forest, that's the way to do it. But do you know why you act, why you do? Is it your values or is it your parents, grandparents, and so forth? Think about that. Is it your church? Is it whatever? I don't know. Is it just common wisdom that you should be this? Well, maybe it isn't your reality. You get to at least identify it. It doesn't mean you have to change. That's what I think scares a lot of people is, oh, if I I, if I go here, then I'm going to have to go all the way. No, you get to choose that later if you want to. Are you honest about recognizing your talents? I've known so many people who have a lot of talent, but because it comes, I think, because it comes easy to them, they don't pursue it. Uh, the imposter syndrome. And I, and I get it. Well, it, you have talent. Maybe you're not the greatest. It doesn't matter. But do you enjoy it? I, do it. Um, there are a lot of people who haven't uh, exploited their talents because I think it comes too easy to them. There are other people who have become very successful, not that that's the goal, even though they're not that talented because they had more confidence than ability. But, you know, our world values confidence, not always the most talent. But be honest about your talents. You know, what are you afraid of? Others' criticism. It won't be good enough. Listen, are you willing to suck at something long enough to get good at it? Because you can't start out being good. Good question. Are you acting in a way that reflects your personal values? There's a tough question for you. And Again, you don't have to know or do right now, but you ask that question. Are my actions reflecting my values? You may need to change or at least consider changing. It's a big question, but that's how you become fully human. As I was writing the book, I get into the part about best practices, good ideas, and there's just a little section in there about adulting and learning how to have tough conversations, learning how to say what needs to be said. And it's just a few paragraphs in the book. But after I got done writing and it was all published, I realized how important that is. And I've now turned that into a presentation, a workshop that I do, saying what needs to be said, how to have tough conversations. There's a way you do it, and there's a thousand ways to do it wrong. But if you don't know how to do it, you'll never do it right. Now, a lot of people think think, well, this is tough love. And tough love usually ends up being really uh, <laughs> skewed toward the tough and really light on the love. And this is not that. It's not just blurting out whatever you want to say. It's learning 
Do you need to say it? How do you say it? Is it important? Choosing your battles and so forth. And uh, and we this isn't like heavy psychology, how to do an intervention, intervention with uh, your dad, you know, if he's drinking. This is more Dear Abby kind of stuff, but it's the things we deal with every day. We're trying to save people's feelings, and we end up stuffing anger, and it's just not healthy at all. It is so good to know how to say what needs to be said and then saying it. And I've got, a, again, a whole workshop and presentation on that. But it's an adulting skill that really helps you free your emotions and knowing you're not going to hurt people because you don't have to be afraid to say what you need to say. Being honest and truthful about who you are, your strengths, weaknesses, and values is what is necessary for you to become a fully functional human being. It is challenging. It is simple. But it is not easy. But it is what is necessary. And you can do this. And everybody who's done it says it's worth it. Everybody. Not one person has said, God, that was a lot of work. It was miserable and I'm no better off. Nobody has ever said that. So you're going to have to find the courage to just go through this. Your base brain is now your reptilian brain is saying, don't do this. It's going to hurt. We're going to feel bad. Yeah, you might. But just tell it, relax, relax, relax. We're going to go through this. It's going to be better on the other side. Have a little faith. Have faith in your ability to move through this. Just tell your, your base brain, just relax. We're going to get through this, and it's going to be okay. And it is going to be okay. And you, being who you are meant to be, being totally you, is the most wonderful thing ever. It is the most wonderful thing ever. And then you can go on and live the rest of your life in some sort of peace and happiness. And life really blossoms once you know who you are and you allow yourself to become that person. So do that. There's no better place to be than totally you. So if you like the podcast, the vlog, I hope you'd hit like. You might subscribe because there's new material coming all the time. Share it with your friends. Go to my website if you want to buy the book. It's on Amazon, but the link's on my website, danhegstead.com, and you could hire me as a speaker if you want. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'm Dan Hegstead. I'm here to help.